All right guys, today we've got Desktop Metal's new studio system, a super high-speed DLP printer, live events, and 3D printed Valentine's chocolates, all right here on Vision Miner 3D Printing News. But first, I'm gonna start this week with the question of the week. And that question is, what tests do you want us to do on all of our filaments? We're right in the middle of releasing a whole bunch of videos on every single filament we carry, and we need you to tell us exactly how you want us to smash, burn, bend, and test them. So get typing down in the comments below and check out our new material videos if you haven't already seen them. Just subscribe and head on over over to our channel. Anyway, let's get right into it. First, we've got Desktop Metal launching their new Studio System 2.0. Based on the previous system, the Studio System Plus, the new system is an office-friendly machine intended for low-volume prototyping and custom end-use production. Powered by the company's proprietary bound metal deposition process, which is another type of FFF, except it uses metal rods, so it uses metal powder bound with polymer binder in rod forms, and it retains all the same features of the old Studio System from the quick-release print heads and a build volume about 300 by 200 by 200 millimeters. It operates on a new streamlined two-step process, which I think is the biggest news. So it's got the core printer and a furnace unit. As such, it's consolidating the previous D-bind center stage into one, which reduces the overall footprint of the system while also eliminating the use of solvents to D-bind, which is huge, especially if you're living in a place like California. So basically, once you print your part, you have a green part, which then gets placed in the oven or the furnace at 1400 Celsius to increase the density and improve their mechanical properties, i.e. sinter it to make it solid metal, at which point it is ready for use. Now, the machine is set to begin worldwide shipments in first quarter 2021, so very soon, and it will be available as an upgrade to all existing Studio System customers. Definitely a company to keep an eye on. Next, we've got Illinois researchers achieving 2,000 layers per minute with a new super high-speed 3D printer. This new totally unique system combines photopolymerization with a six-axis robotic arm that you might see used in an industrial direct energy deposition 3D printer or on a conventional assembly line. As the robotic arm of the printer isn't locked into exclusively building the Z-axis, it can be used to dynamically transform each layer on the fly, pivoting the printing direction without having to stop or restart the print. Additionally, since the printing engine is a DLP-based light projector, the system as a whole lends itself to rapid curing times and high-resolution features. Entire layers are 3D printed at once, and there's no delay between slices, so the system actually operates on a rolling, ongoing basis. Cheng Sun, the Associate Professor of Mechanical Engineering at Northwestern University and lead author of the project, concludes, this is a very fast process, and since there's no interruption between layers, we hope that the manufacturing industry will find benefit in it. The general printing method is compatible with a wide range of materials. Very, very cool stuff. Carbon, watch out, they're coming for you. By the way, if you're enjoying this video and the content we've been releasing, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. We've got new content coming out multiple times a week, and that like lets YouTube know that you enjoy our content, so it shows it to more people. Uh, and if there's something special you want us to cover, definitely leave a comment below. We read almost every comment. We're getting a lot nowadays, so we get to as many as we can, uh, but definitely just let us know down there. Next, we've got Mark Ford's 3D printers being used by NASA, JPL, Team CoStar robots in the DARPA Subterranean Challenge. So basically, Mark Ford is helping a collaborative team take on the DARPA Subterranean Challenge. And the project aims to develop a fully autonomous robotic system capable of traversing underground environments such as caves during planetary explorations. Named CoStar, the team is made up of 60 engineers from across the globe, from places like JPL, NASA, Caltech, and more. Using spot robots from Boston Dynamics, the team needed to quickly design and produce extra components, such as brackets and enclosures, and they landed, of course, on 3D printing. The CoStar team members turned to MarkForge 3D printers and Iger Software to produce strong and lightweight functional parts for the robots and found that the 3D printed brackets and mounts actually outperformed their aluminum counterparts. Yeah better than aluminum, that's right. Uh, the team also produced a 3D printed cage for the $7,000 LiDAR scanner on the robot using the Mark IV's printers and the firm's continuous carbon fiber reinforced material. In total, the team's robots named Nebula contained around 15 3D printed parts. 
It just goes to show how applicable some of these carbon fiber materials can be. Uh, so check out visionminer.com slash materials for all the selections that we've got. Plus, you can get 3% back on every purchase. In more wearables news, we've got Nitsi AI upgrading their shoe fit with 3D foot scans straight from your phone. The US-based startup is making use of the iPhone's depth-sensing Face ID technology to predict comfortable sneaker fit for customers via 3D modeling. It works by asking the user some simple questions about their sneaker fit preference before providing instructions to the user on how to capture a 3D scan of their feet using the iPhone's front-facing camera. This scan is meant to provide the user with customized fit prediction for a variety of sneakers that are already offered in their app. An individualized fit score out of five in green text is displayed next to each sneaker model. Now, Nietzsche uses a specially designed machine learning model to interpret the foot scans that users take and provide predictions for a comfortable fit across many major different sneaker brands like Puma, Nike, Jordan Air, and Adidas by scanning the insoles of those sneakers. Now, this is actually super awesome because I recently bought some shoes online and I literally could not even get them onto my feet. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check this one out. Uh, anyway, learn more from the link in the description below and let's get into live events in 2021. We've got Rapid TCT added manufacturing show being pushed back to September. Uh, as we all could have predicted, North America's largest 3D printing trade show has been rescheduled for September 13th through 15th, 2021 at McCormick Place in Chicago. It had been scheduled for April of this year, but the date was changed because of COVID-19. The 2020 show was also canceled due to the whole global crisis thing. Uh, Rapid this time is actually going to co-locate with Fabtech 2021, which is North America's largest metal forming, fabricating, welding, and finishing event. I've been to both of these events separately, and frankly, smashing them together is going to be a crazy big show. Uh, and if you want something before all that, we've still got a mug coming right up in May in Orlando, Florida. So I will definitely see you there. Next, we've got Sugar Labs offering a new Valentine's collection with 3D printed chocolates. That's right, if you still need a Valentine's gift, it's probably too late right now, but if your loved one is super nerdy, who would turn down a late box of 3D printed chocolates? I think this is definitely a winner, guy or girl. Uh, there's a variety of choices to choose from, including strawberry covered chocolate truffles, which is obviously a, a play on the traditional chocolate covered strawberries. Uh, we've also got the 80s and 90s throwback bonbons and broken heart puzzle chocolate shuffles. Uh, for more 3D printing of food, if you're into that kind of thing, definitely check out our entire video on the state of the food 3D printing industry right over here on our YouTube channel. Next, in some military news, we've got the Department of Defense unveiling their additive manufacturing strategy. The U.S. Department of Defense, the DOD, has released its first ever comprehensive additive manufacturing strategy, which aims to establish a common vision for the use of 3D printing within the nation's defense program. Additive manufacturing offers the DOD unprecedented supply chain agility while enabling our developers to sustain technological dominance for our warfighters, said Robert Gold, director of the technology and manufacturing industrial base in the Strategic Technology Protection and Exploitation Office, and he's also the overseer of OSD Mantech. Additive manufacturing is also helping to increase material readiness for rapid prototyping and production of end-use parts, which in turn reduces the risk of obsolete hardware over time. There's a huge article on this in the description below, so be sure to click the link if you're craving for more. And for all you DOD contractors out there, we're here to help because we work with a ton of aerospace and defense companies, so let us know if you got any specific questions and we'll give you our best answer. Here at Vision Miner, we actually specialize in functional 3D printing, especially high-performance plastics like Peak, Ultim, PPSU, and more. Even the carbon fiber nylons across the board, and everything's got carbon fiber. It's really, really cool. Uh, and if you're interested in using these functional materials in your business, feel free to reach out. We can help you make the right choice for your application, even if it's not something we sell. Because frankly, we don't got everything, but we got a lot of really good stuff. So, on that note, thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.